Hi everybody, welcome to the Artist Corner. I'm Harry Flatcow. We have a very special guest tonight, a uh, very dear old friend. I've known him since 1973 when he was pretty much the, uh, uh, the originator of some great jazz here in Milford. He put down his horn and now he's an artist. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Don Acavelli. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. You're doing good? Yeah, doing fine. How long has it been since you played uh, your, your alto or any of your instruments? About six months ago. Six months. You totally said that's it? No, no. I've got, it was a long, well, I was a music teacher, public schools and right. all that, and a composer, arranger, and all, and performer. And I had an eight-piece band. We did a lot of playing. And it came time when I said, that's it. You, you, know, you had some type of epiphany. It was, yeah, it was a situation of, I got, they got tired of me, I got tired of them. Yeah. You know, and we did a lot of work, did a lot of playing, and it was like a mutual, okay. Yeah. And then I, then I was still playing with uh, a big band, and I got disinterested with that because it was the same old jive every Wednesday night. Uh, I hear, I hear you. And that was it, so I just said, no, I'm just going to start. Uh, painting instead of doing this. But I've been painting since about 1990. Uh -huh. Yeah, where uh, I, I took a course in fine arts. And it was a certification course while I was teaching school. And when you graduated from this course, it was a summer course, and when you graduated, you had got a fine arts degree. Mm. And at the time, uh, actually, a sign arts certificate. And at the time, they wanted to combine art teachers and music teachers to one person called a fine art person okay. in, in that school, which was actually cutting budgetary stuff. Yeah. So it wasn't too popular. But the thing I liked about it was when I went to the, when I went to the, to the, to the college, which was up in Fitchburg, State it was a pretty decent school for what we did. Yeah, all musicians became artists, and all artists became musicians. Wow! And so I, for the summer, I was just painting and drawing and you know, doing all that stuff, learning things. You know, it was like seven twenty-four. You did it all the time. When you were in college, or were you when you were getting the certification? Were you exposed to folk art? When did that no, come okay. about for you? Folk art's a different story. What had happened to me one day, I was driving through Framingham. I was always been a lover of folk art. Okay, I try to find as many books as I can buy that shows folk, folk art. The, the portraits of these people, you know, that are no longer with us. And, and it's, a lot of people would call them silly because it's their self-taught artists that draw this. Always loved it. And Framingham, Danforth Museum yeah. in Framingham had the Grandma Moses, all her paintings. And I said, whoa, I got to go in there. So I went in. I was awed by what I saw. Was she representative of that genre of folk she art? She was. <clears throat> there, were, there were many folk artists. Many of them, just like the, Bach is the most successful, as we call, Baroque, Baroque right, composer. Right. But there were thousands of other composers sure. right around Bach's time that were just as good. He just was better than the rest of yeah. them. Her style, because she started painting at about, I don't know, 68 years old and died close to 100, and she was still painting then. Yeah. And her images were colorful, and you have you had to see them, you know. And she became very successful, where Harry Harry Truman called her the the artist laureate of, oh the, of the United States, which I'm going to tell you a story. Now. Wait a minute, hold on. All right. Because we want to see your pieces as well. Uh, now I'm influenced. I'm influenced a lot by her great great-grandson, who I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, Will Moses. Jerry, bring up the first one, man. All right, tell us about this. Uh, okay, that's, that's, 
I do a lot of, a lot of people call me to put their house in a painting, okay? And uh, that is not one of them. <laughs> but that is just, a, uh, I think the title of that is Family Reunion, and it just shows a house. And, and if you, the whole image is, there's more to the image. There's a boat out in the ocean over there, and the people are looking at it, and the kids playing baseball, women playing croquet, and some young girl with a cow with a guy on top of it sitting backwards. There's always, always something to look into it. How long does it take you to do something like this? Do you remember? Well, we're talking weeks, months? <laughs> anywhere from two days to maybe two years. Yeah. Two years? Yeah. Depending on, I mean, I don't, that's not all I do. Yeah. I mean, I get six or seven paintings growing at the same at time. At the same time? Yeah. When I, with some of the huge ones, what I do is uh, I'll start them, get them about three quarters done. Then I'm, then I'm starting to rush it, so I just put it away. And I started something else, and this is what's going on. When you approach the easel for the first time, do you envision something yeah. in your mind's eye? Well, a lot of times you do a sketch. Yeah. And sometimes the sketch is in your head, you know. And let's face it, a lot of stuff that we see is stuff that we've seen before. Now, I read folk art books. I look at folk art uh, pictures, and I'll see, and I might see a house that I might like. I might use that, uh. use, use that house, and elaborate on it. It's not a, it's not a copy, yeah. you know, and elaborate on it. And then once the setting is done, then you start with the images okay. of what you're going to do, and, and that just leads to more stuff, right. you know, like in, in, in some of the paintings that you don't have here. I have kids, kids is ice skating, kids is throwing snowballs at them. I saw that piece. I it, think it's on here. It could be. Yeah. You know, and you know, some kid fell down, and a girl is skating, and she fell down. <sighs> and uh, I had one which I called uh, A Star is Born, that the, uh, they, they, actually they bought two of them. There's a place in, in it's a school in uh, Hopedale, uh -huh. Seven Hills, I believe it's called, yeah. Seven Hills. And it's, this is called Star is Born, and there's a girl in her little tutu in the middle, middle of this, you know, she's spinning around and kids are looking at her, and other kids are skating all over the place. So that one, right, that sold right away. You know, somebody liked it. And there's I one up, EMC has one like that. They, they're big ones. A lot of people like the winter scenes. I like the winter scenes, but you actually have to paint other scenes. Sure. Jerry, bring up another one. Maybe this is the winter scene. Uh, well, that, that has a glare. Okay. There you go. Okay. That's definitely a winter scene. <clears throat> okay. That barn I saw in New York art, it didn't look like that. It was just the shape of the barn. And uh, it was just an old gray photograph of a barn and another barn in front of it. So I just changed the whole setting, and I put a couple of you know birds up there with the owl and the kids. You can see the people ice skating though. You and can really see it. And kids ice skating all over the place. Yeah, it, it it brings you back, and like you know, getting back to what I was telling you before, because this is an important story for me. After I saw the Grandma Moses stuff, and I got in contact with Will Moses, okay, and he encouraged me with a lot of this stuff, and and I, I, I like what he does. My stuff is not like his stuff because he's more comical. Yeah, his characters are very comical and very much more rural. But I, I belong to a lot of art clubs. Yeah. So, somebody told me, why don't you join the Wellesley Art Club? So I did, and I got rejected. And I said, can you, can you tell me why you rejected me? And they says, well, uh, we just want <laughs> fine artists oh. and expressionists. I said, well, okay. Are you upset? I says, no. I says, Grandma Moses couldn't get into your group, <laughs> and she's America's artist laureate. Incredible. I said, thank you for your time. Good and for off you. I went Good for you. Yeah, you know, I mean, I wasn't going to talk that. That's, that's one of the problems folk artists have. Well, you know, there's a certain naivete about it. 
That's the word I don't like. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm just stating no, no, the fact. No, it's a term. It's a term. All right. It's a term that was created by snobs. By who? Snobs. <laughs> you, you ha I belong to the Blackstone Art Association, yeah. which is my favorite group of people. All right. They are by far the nicest people I've ever met, and I love them all dearly. All right. And I just don't, ha I, this year I did not have enough time to really be a member, and I apologize to them for that. Plus, I belong to a, a lot of other art groups that look at me as, oh, he's a folk artist. Oh, he's a folk artist. I'm a fine artist. And they take this seriously. You know, and I look at it as, you know, I mean, a lot of them are clean air artists, which means they go outside and they paint a painting in, 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 in the outdoors of a tree in a stream or something like that. And they want $500 for it. There you go. You know, and I, I tried it. I didn't like it. Actually, I was in one of the groups and I did a painting. And my wife was also in the group with me. Okay. And she never painted in her life. She won first place oh my God. As, as, as a plea there artist. And I had my barn, and this is up in Mendes. I had my barn, but I couldn't leave it there. I had to put a few images in it. Cool. And the guy, I looked at it and he said, you had to do it, didn't you? I said, <laughs> I said yeah. And that, that was it, you know. But, I mean, it's, I have fun doing this. Uh, a lot of my paintings are at the, some at the town library. Uh, they're in nursing homes. Yeah. I donate a lot of stuff to people. Uh, I'm in a lot of shows this summer. Wait a minute, before no, you talk ahead, about that. Go ahead. Bring up another one, Jerry. Okay, a lot of these look similar, but they're really not. They're really not. That, that's fairly new. That's not completed. Most of my paintings today are what they call wraparound. You don't need a canvas. The, the canvas would probably be about that thick on the sides, about an inch and a half on the, side, on the sides. And I continue the painting around the canvas. Right. So when you walk into the room, you can see the image from the side and go right around it to the other side and see the whole thing. That's the way I do my photography now as well. Yeah. yeah. Now, here's the reason I do it is because I could sell a painting to somebody. Let's say, well, I don't charge a lot. Let's say an X amount of money. And they could take it to a framer and he charge them three times what I charge sure. and put it in the frame. Yeah. You know, our artists are notoriously bad for framing their own stuff. Mm. And what they look around for is the cheapest thing they can find, plop their painting in it, yeah. and it, there it is. And it doesn't look good, yeah. you know, because you got this chain you bought from Millie's house, house sale or something well, like that. Well, you have to consider if it's going to fit the decor of, of A lot of room. people don't. See, yeah. a lot, artists should never frame their own <laughs> stuff. Yeah, should I believe never it. Frame I it. believe it. And and it, it is expensive because yeah. it'll double the price or triple the price yeah. in many cases. So I like the wraparound for primarily that reason. Yeah. It takes a little bit more time, but most people like it. Do you wrap your own? No. Oh, okay. No, I, <coughs> no, I, 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 I wouldn't even attempt it. Yeah. You know. Jerry, bring up another one, buddy. All right, there's a series of two of these. This is a winter scene of a, I could call it around Christmas time. What I think, town would that be in your own mind? I don't know. Mayberry, RFD, who knows? I don't know. I just started putting one building in and putting another one aside. I, 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 I like colors, all different types of colors. And when you have a scene with grass in it, which is green, yeah. you're limited what you can use for a lot of colors. So when you have snow, you can put anything you want to wow. put. Wow. You know, and this is just a happy day. Your you know, photos are happy. They're well, family related, and uh, 
say what you want about uh, the word naivete. <laughs> but, you know, that is. And there and are I know snobs out there that will say the fine artist. Yeah. But you express yourself beautifully. And, I, and Let me ask you, uh, what's Moses' first name? Oh, Grandma Will. Will. Oh, gra Grandma Moses. No, her grandson. What was oh, his? Will Moses. Is he one of the major exponents in folk art? We talk about that. We've talked about that. Who? Me and Will. Oh, okay. And it's the situation is he just does his own thing. He says, ignore it. Just do what you want to do. Yeah. Now, Will Moses can sell a painting for seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Because he's internationally he... famous. Because of his yeah his grandmother yeah and he lives on the on his grandma in his grandmother's old house and yeah. he has a farm he's an EMC okay you know EMT I'm sorry an EMT and he actually ran for mayor and lost of uh, mayor of what? and he lives up in uh, what is it called uh, oh it'll, I can't think of the name of the town it's, it's, well just just mention some names that are really first and foremost in in folk art genre? There aren't many. Uh, Will is one. There's another one called Mary Applegate. And there's a Mary Singleton. And these are all older women yeah. who are art teachers who paint similar, but not the same. Right. You know? Well, folk art is going to be based on the individual, right? Well, it's what. It, what somebody told me when I, I, I gave one, one, I gave about eight to uh, Draper Place because my mother was in there and they did terrific with her. Yeah. And a girl asked me for some paintings and I, I gave her some. And through the course of the years, I just gave them many. Just the older women like to look at it because they see things in it that they've never, it brings them back to their old days. Incredible. Like I remember, being a kid, Bear Hill. Yeah. You know what Bear Hill is? Sure. Okay. I slid down Bear Hill. It was a snowy day, and it was a day off from school, and the plows could never, they were too busy with doing other stuff. And me and the guys were at the top of the Bear Hill. Wow. We went all the way down Bear Hill, halfway up Central Street. Wow. Okay. One car came by, and he didn't believe it. He stopped that car because you couldn't go anymore. The snow had to be like seven, eight that inches. That was one. It. That's a steep And then we hill walked thing. all the way back up, oh and we my did God. it again. It was like, I'll never forget it. You know, you can't do that today. You know, and, uh, you know, kids did goofy things. Some kids slid. Some kids stood on this, on, on their, on their uh, on sleds. The sled, yeah. You know, they didn't have snowboards at those days, but they also they had skis. And we, we just had a lot of fun growing up, and we threw snowballs at each other and did stuff like that. That's what I like to do. Yeah. And there are several reasons why, because I'm not a trained painter. I'm a painter who taught myself. That's where the naivete comes in. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I just enjoy doing it. Like, you know, I, I'm usually in, I have two studios, as you saw, and because my wife, she says, just paint downstairs. You know, and uh, and that's what it, I'm there all the time. You know, I mean, I used to practice my horn and write music all the time. Yeah. Then it's like you're banging your head against the wall because it seemed to be the more you did in music, the less you were appreciated. Right? <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Well, putting yourself out there has risks. You know. Well, it does. It does, but it gets old. Also, yeah, you know this, this way here. Well, you've you know, paid your dues as a musician. Time, huh? you've paid your dues as a musician. Yeah, I've, many I've, years. we've done a lot of concerts, a lot of a lot of programs. You know, it's like you know, nothing is more uh, aggravating than somebody come up to you and say, "Would you play for me tenderly?" Sure, and then you play it, and, and they come back in ten minutes. Uh, Would you play tenderly for me? I said, "We just played it." Oh, I was in the bathroom. Oh my. <laughs> You've been through that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Happens all the time. It's like having somebody tell you what a great player you are, <laughs> and they they have hearing aids. <laughs> Jerry, bring up another one, buddy. You know what that looks like? That looks like a town. That's the same town, actually. Um, 
It's an old Midwestern town, probably. Old Miss. That, you know, that like. might have been something that Mary Singleton had at one time, because she did some things like that. Not the same. Do you, do you know what town in Massachusetts has the... Um, Are you thinking of... Uh, 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 what's Stockbridge? It? Yeah, Stockbridge. This looks like downtown Stockbridge. Yeah, you're, you're thinking, yeah. Well, they all look the same, these, these places, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, there's cars and there's a couple of kids over there with their little, uh, you know, Boy Scout thing and they're pushing it. The and detail the, and, and the, the car and, and the car on the bottom with that steam coming out. Sure. <laughs> you know, and the, and the guy on the horse. Attention yeah. to detail, you're absolutely Well, correct. there's a lot of stuff you, yeah. you got to worry about. Yeah, a lot of stuff you do. But if you make a mistake, it's okay because you're a folk artist. <laughs> you're, you're a naivete. There you go. <laughs> you know. I mean, I have fun doing it. I mean, I, when somebody, I've given more paintings away. I, I remember at one time I was in, in Bonstable Harbor and a woman came riding by, walking by with a baby and the baby was gorgeous and she's looking at the painting and she said, oh my God, I wish I had the money to buy one. And I said, you don't have to buy one. And I gave her one. I had a painting of, 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 of a mother standing up on a hill, pointing at the moon, and there were a little boy and a little girl right aside of her. And in the valley, there was all these folk, folk buildings and stuff. And I, I said, give it, give it to the kid. It's, it's, a, it's a present for us. Oh, thank you very much. But it, I do this, you know? Well, the question is, where are you going to be giving more of your stuff away? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be, this summer, I'm going to be on the Cape. I got, luckily, I got invited to, to join Castleberry Fairs. Is and this a, uh, t tell us about the event. What's that going to be Castleberry about? Fairs does a lot of big fairs uh, all over the country. And they're into, a lot of them are uh, national people. They travel with them. And I'm going to be in Chatham, August 4th and 5th. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to be in uh, Brewster at the Drummer Boy Park, 24th and 25th, I believe. It's the weekend before Labor Day. Yeah. And then two weeks after that, I'm going to be at the uh, Sudbury Inn for another group that I joined, uh, Joyce Endy. She's another person that does uh, national shows. Okay. How much uh, time do we have left? You know? Five minutes? Okay, all right. We got five minutes. Yeah, and then I'll be at Hope Hill. I'm doing a lot of paintings I'm doing now. Uh, people have contacted me to put their house in a painting. Yeah. Okay, I've done one for the Steele family in Hopedale. Yeah. I've done one for, uh, what's his name, uh, Paul Serpine. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, I've done one for my daughter, of course. Which one did you do for Paul Serpine? It's his house. Oh, on, on, cha on Chaplin Street. Yeah, Chaplin it's a neat Street. house. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's on a hill. Yeah. He lives on the bottom of the hill. I, I use the hill as, as a uh, focal point. Focal point, and the kids are driving, are sliding down and doing all kinds of goofy oh, things. I would love his to house see is that. in the bottom, and he's in the backyard playing with the, with the orchestra, and he's conducting the oh orchestra my God. in the backyard. It's a huge painting. Wow. You know, well, Paul's a friend. He, he does wonderful things. Uh, yeah, things. indeed. You know, so. So he's, he's been a good friend of mine. And I'm going to be at Hopedale. But I mean, if, you know, if people want their pictures, contact me. Yeah. Should we put your email address up on the screen? Uh, if you want to, I, I don't care. It's, uh, well, at least they'll know how to reach you. Well, it's a capital D, small case O N I A C O V. E L L I at six. Don Yacovelli six at gmail.com. The number six, not number six. Yeah. Number yeah. six. Okay. At right. gmail.com. We will get that. We will put that. And, on well, the I'm in the phone book. You know, I mean. Phone book. Nobody well, in the phone book. I'm actually book. doing a painting now for a guy in Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> How did that come about? I grew, he grew up in Concord. He lived near the Louisa May Alcott house, and he yeah. loved it. And he works for the embassy out there. So he contacted I saw him up in Sudbury. And he, he bought two paintings in Sudbury, and he contacted me. He says, could you do one of the Louisa May Alcott house? And I said, do you have a house too? He says, well, I'm in Arabia right now, he says. <laughs> he says, I said, I'll put one in. And we, we, he, he's got a wife and, and three kids. And Did you put a camel in the photo? No, <laughs> no, he wants it because he's going to be done with that, I think, in, in a while. Right. And he's going to pick it up and conk it, you know, when, uh, when I'm up there. At, cool. That's on September 4th, I think, you know. We've been talking with Don Acavelli, <coughs> folk artist extraordinaire here in the town of Bilgewater, Massachusetts. <laughs> Thank you, Don. It's been a pleasure. Uh, it's fun. It's always, always been fun. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs>